Hello, good morning. This is Rick Pina, and I'm bringing you today's word for November 2nd, 2023. I'm teaching a series on the parables of Jesus. Right now, I'm teaching on the parable of the prodigal son. There's so much in this parable, and I believe that this parable helps us understand a little bit better the heart of God. So I've been preaching for 28 years, and up until 2012, a lot of my teaching had a lot to do with faith, and it was really living the life of faith. And so I would close every message by saying, we are the just, and the just shall live by faith. And I taught a lot about how what, you know, what our responsibility is to live by faith. When 2012, I started studying the grace of God. And so it wasn't that my teaching was incorrect, but it was incomplete. And so faith is our part, but grace is God's part. Under the old covenant, the spot, well, the spotlight was on man and what man has to do for God to get man to the end of himself to prove us that we're not good enough. Um, but now under the new covenant, it's not about what man is doing for God as about what God has already done for us. And so now it's this grace of God that I teach now that I, I have a better understanding. So now I can teach God's faith and our grace on a greater level. So I've given you many faith refreshers over the years. Well, I say, hey, I'm give you, gonna give you a faith refresher today. People get excited and I really explain, you know, faith and how it works and how you can apply it and how we live by it. But today I'm gonna give you a grace refresher. Like, I, like, like sometimes we just need to be reminded about the goodness and the grace of God. So the title of today's message is Pearls from the Parables, Part 91. 91 messages so far with the parables. And the title actually is Unshakable Identity. Put in the chat, I have an unshakable identity because I understand the power of God's grace and love. When I, when I embrace the grace of God, when I embrace the love of God, I will have an identity in Christ Jesus that is unshakable. Say this, I have an unshakable identity, not because of me but because of God's grace and God's love. So get ready to receive the word this morning. Open up your heart to God's grace. All right, so we really want to open up our heart to the love and to the grace of God because this is how we get to walk in the fullness of the reality of which Christ Jesus died to provide for us, right? So Jesus died to provide us a level of freedom and love and power and grace that we would never walk in if our emphasis is on us. This is why I teach you all the time to be delivered from performance-based religion. Put in the chat, I am delivered from performance-based religion. I told you before that if you're expectation from God is based on your level of performance towards God, then you will never be able to believe God on the level that you want to believe because your performance would never be that good. You're just not good enough. You need to get over the fact that you are a human, that you are flawed, that you have faults, and that you will never be able to perform on the level that God wants to bless you. So you got to disconnect or detach your faith from your performance. Put in the chat, I disconnect, I detach my faith for my performance. Put in the chat, my faith is not based on my performance. My faith is based on God's grace. And God's grace towards me is unconditional. It is unyielding. It is immeasurable. So when I connect my faith to God's grace, I get to walk on a whole nother level because it's not about me. It's all about him. It's a grace refresher today. You're going to be delivered. Y'all ready? All right. So Psalms 126 and verse four is a scripture we've been looking at all year. I want to look at it again today. Um, if you have an area of your life that's dried up, then this is a season for you to be refreshed and restored. The Bible says, now, Lord, do it again. Restore us to the former glory. May streams of your refreshing flow over us until dry hearts are drenched again. I believe that this season of refreshing and restoring, uh, in this time, we can open up our hearts to where if there was an area of your life that did dry up, maybe you lost the zeal, passion, fervor, favor. In this season, the Lord is going to refresh you and restore you again to this former glory. Say amen to that. All right, so the, the parable of the prodigal son, this is a very familiar parable. Jesus told the story. He said a man had two sons. And the younger son came to him and said, hey, dad, um, I know you got this inheritance for us, right? Yep. And we're supposed to get it when you die, right? Yep. Um, well, I want mine now. And that was very disrespectful, especially in the Jewish culture, because it was basically saying, I would love, you know, I, I want you to be dead because I want 
the inheritance that I'm supposed to get when you die. I want it now. And the father was very gracious. He said, fine, I'm going to give it. But now since I'm going to give it to you, I got to give it to your brother. So he gave it to both of them. The older brother was like, why are you pulling me into this? I have nothing to do with this. So he gave it to both of them. As soon as both of them got the money, the older brother did nothing. The older brother kept, you know, living the way that he was living, honoring his father, going to work, supporting the family business, all of that. No problem. The younger son, as soon as he got the money, he said, I'm out of here. And so he took off. And the Bible says that he wasted all of his money on wild living. And as soon as his money ran out, a famine swept over the land. And so he was starving. He needed to get a job. He, he, he convinced this farmer to give him a job. But the problem is that the, far, the farmer gave him a job dealing with pigs. And Jews don't deal with pigs. But anyway, he's out there dealing with pigs. And he's so hungry that the pig slop starts looking good to him. And then he came to himself because nobody gave him anything to eat. He came to himself and said, wait a minute. Even my servants, my father has a staff at home. And... My father's staff, the servants have it better than me right now. Them jokers always eating. He probably thought about one of them. You know, such and such is fat. He's always eating. They have enough food. And here I am starving. He came to himself. He says, let me go back home. But he was in guilt and shame and condemnation. He says, I'm going to go back home. But now I'm not worthy to be called a son because of what I've done. In other words, my performance has disqualified me from the blessing. My, dis my performance has disqualified me from my position. And this is what the devil does. The devil specializes in guilt and shame and condemnation. The devil wants you to think that your performance has disqualified you from your position. And so he was like, well, I'm going to go home and say, Father, I'm not worthy to be called your son. I'll just be a servant. And so as he's going home, he's nursing and rehearsing this in his mind. But at the same time, the father is looking at it from a completely different perspective. The father is operating in love and grace. And he's coming out there every day saying, when is my son coming home? And so as he sees his son coming home, the father runs to the son, throws his arms around him, kisses him on the neck and says, hey, son. And, but the son says, daddy, I'm not worthy to be called your son. I know I messed up. I know I've done, done things wrong. And because of that, because of my performance, I know that I've lost my position. And the father was like, what the heck are you talking about? There's no way. You, you can't lose your position. You're, you're my son. I mean, you, you were born that way. I mean, what are you talking about? You're going to lose your position. Your performance has nothing to do with your position. You were born. No, you're my son. He says to his servants, get the robe, get the ring, get the sandals, kill the fatter calf. My son who was dead, he's now home. Let's throw a party. The other son was working. And the other son comes home. He hears the music. He's like, what's going on? One of the servants says, well, your brother is home and your father's throwing a party. He killed a fatter calf. The older brother says, I'm not going in the party. He's pissed off. And so the father comes out. He's like, what's going on? He's like, dad, let me tell you something. I've been faithful the whole time. I love you. I honor you. I respect you. You even gave me the money I did nothing with. I don't even care about the money. I'm your son. You're my dad, and I honor you, and I do everything you tell me to do. But come on, Dad. You've never thrown me a party. You never even killed a goat for me and my friends. But this joker went out there and spent all this money on prostitutes, and now he's going to come home and going to throw him a party? And the father says, this is the heart of God. Come here, son. Everything I have is yours. I know you're a good son. I don't think you understand how good you have it and how much I love you and how much I will shower you with blessings. Everything I have is yours. But come on, I got to celebrate your brother. Your brother was dead. He's now home. He's alive. So I'm throwing him a party. So let's stop there. What does this mean for you today? I actually have six things to share with you about the grace of God. I have a lot to share with you this morning. Put in the chat. I'm ready to receive. This is a grace refresher. Put in the chat. This is a grace refresher refresher. I'm going to I'm going to refresh you with the grace of God. I'm going to give you a dose of God's grace so much so that you're going to feel like you can leap a tall building with a single bound. You ready for the grace of God? You ready? You ready? Open up your heart to God's grace. Here we go. Number one, grace, the unmerited favor of God. Grace is unearned, unmerited, undeserved. Grace is not based on your performance. Grace is based on God and his goodness and his favor towards you. Listen, grace is God's there's two aspects of God's grace. In one aspect, God gives you things that you do not deserve. You do nothing. God does everything. God, don't, God moves upon people's hearts. He raises up people to use their power, their ability, their influence, and their money to help you in ways that you cannot help yourself. He opens doors for you that no man can close. He closes doors for you that no man can open. It is the grace of God. You do nothing. God does everything. That's one aspect of God's grace. 
the other aspect of God's grace is where God empowers you to do all things. Where now there's God super on your natural. So in the first one, I do nothing. God does everything. In the second one, I can do all things through Christ Jesus. So God empowers me to do what I could never do without God. It's God, God super on me. And so I am able to do what I could not do while I was disconnected from God. So God empowers me. That is the grace of God. So I'm, I've come to understand that when we're walking with God, we got to understand the relationship between our faith and God's grace. Faith is my part. Grace is God's part. When I understand grace that God has already provided, now I'm releasing faith to receive what God has already provided for me. And he provided it for me from the foundations of the world. And it was not based on my performance. It was based on his goodness. So God's grace covers us in our moments of weakness. God's grace. Paul said, listen, you know what? Here is sin and here is grace. He says, grace covers sin. And he says, where sin abounds, grace abounds even more. If you go out and sin again, grace covers you again. If you go out and sin again, grace covers you again. Now he says, now stop, stop. All you religious people saying, are you saying that I could just go sin so that the grace of God, stop. He's saying, should I continue in sin so that grace could abound? Of course not. God forbid. If you, under, if you think that, that grace is a license to sin, then you don't understand grace at all. Grace is not freedom to sin. Grace is freedom from sin. Put in the chat, grace is freedom from sin. Grace is God's empowerment on me for me not to sin. So, so no, it's understanding the grace of God helps me to now receive the, 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 the supernatural empowerment to do what God has called me to do. And the fact that God is not holding my faults, my faults and my flaws and my failures against me. And so because of that, God can take my failures and turn them into testimonies. God can take my, take my scars and turn them into stars. When I understand the grace of God, I'm not trying to make everything happen. I'm resting in God's finished work. I'm releasing faith for what God has already provided. The prodigal son thought his performance stripped him of his position in the family. But when he came home, he encountered the grace of God. He, the grace of God through his father. He encountered, listen, the father was like, no, you are a son. I don't, your, your performance didn't strip you of your position. Go get the robe. Go get the ring. Go get the sandals. Go kill the fatted calf. My son is home. You are a son. And if an earthly father can do that, how much more will our heavenly father shower us with his love and grace. Say amen to that. Put in the chat, I open my heart to the grace of God. I'm going to free somebody this morning. You guys are going to be free with this grace refreshing. Number two, the gift of no condemnation through Christ Jesus. Listen, when I bring up this point, uh, no condemnation, a lot of people think that I'm going to go to Romans chapter eight. In Romans chapter eight, after juxtaposing Romans chapter seven, where it talks about this war in the flesh, Romans chapter eight says, there's therefore not no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made us free from the law of sin and death. So that's Romans chapter eight. I'm not going to go there. I'm going to John chapter five and verse 24. In John five and 24, the Bible says, this is Jesus said, he said, verily, verily, I say unto you, he that hears my words and believes in him that sent me, three things are going to happen. He has everlasting life. He shall not come into condemnation, but is already passed from death unto life. This is what Jesus said. Jesus said, hey, he that hears my words and believes in him that sent me, three things are going to happen. Number one, you receive everlasting life. That means that this life lasts forever. Put in the chat, I have everlasting life and I have it right now. That's number one. Number two, you shall not come into condemnation. So I'm not going to come into condemnation, period, point blank, period. There is no condemnation for me. I'm not going to allow the devil to get me to wallow in guilt and shame and condemnation because the Bible says there's no condemnation for me. And number three, I've already passed from death unto life. And so I've already done all the dying I'm going to do. For me, dying is not dying because my spirit is still alive. For me, dying is moving day. When this body stops functioning and it drops to the ground, my spirit is going to go to heaven and I'm going to be forever with the Father. So for me, it's, I just graduate from earth to glory, from time to eternity, from mortal to immortality. There is no condemnation for me. So Jesus took all the condemnation I was ever going to have and he took it and placed it on the cross. And so there is no condemnation. Why? He took on my condemnation so that I can live in the freedom that Jesus Christ provided for me. Put in the chat, I walk in freedom. Condemnation 
is from the enemy. The devil wants you to feel condemned. That this is what the prodigal son was feeling. He was feeling condemned. But God comes to correct us, not to condemn us. Put in the chat. God comes to correct me, not to condemn me. The devil wants to condemn you. God just wants to correct you. And God wants you to get you back on the path so that your feet can be bound to the path that he established for you from the foundations of the world. Understanding that you are the righteousness of God in Christ. Understanding that that the righteousness of God is on you and in you and with you and for you will help you to stand firm against the accusations of the enemy. Even when you do something wrong, you're quick to repent. You're quick to receive forgiveness from God. You're quick to forgive yourself and keep stepping. The love of God is demonstrated through the fact that Jesus died for us and, and delivered us from guilt and shame and condemnation. When you get a revelation of no condemnation, then you can walk in the boldness and the grace for your purpose. Say amen to that. Number three, the power of God's love and grace. God's love for us is unconditional. His grace is unchanging. It, by understanding God's love and grace, you are transformed from the inside out. When you get a revelation of God's love and grace, it compels you to live righteously, not out of obligation, but out of gratitude. Put in the chat, I live righteously, not out of obligation, but out of gratitude. So let me explain. I do what I do every day. I, I want to please the Lord. I want to. Yesterday we went to, to the school. We got to spend some time with our kids. I'm going to post some pictures today. I just released an audio book. Uh, if you don't have the, the my, I have two books now on Audible. So you should check that out. Get the book. I do all wh what I do for the Lord, not because I don't want to go to hell. I know I'm not going to hell. I just do it because I love God. I do it out of, out of my gratitude and obedience towards him. I do it because I just want to be the, the son that he called me to be. I'm not doing it because I'm afraid of going to hell. I know I'm not going to hell. I, I'm just doing it. I'm not doing it out of obligation. I'm doing it out of gratitude. Put in the chat, I love God. I serve God out of gratitude, not out of obligation. See, religious people do things out of obligation. Religious people do things because they want to check them. No, I'm not doing things out of obligation. I'm doing things because I want to do it, because the grace of God is on me to do it, because God has been so good to me. So we don't know what happened with the prodigal son after this encounter with the father. Uh, but the encounter that we have with our heavenly father, with the grace and the love of God, when we do something wrong and we come back to God and we're like, well, I'm sorry, God, I'm not worthy. And God is like, shut up, you, you're a son, right? When God receives us with love and grace, it changes us from the inside out and it changes us forever to the point where the, we can then become a conduit of God's love and grace in this world. Number four, righteousness over condemnation. Put in the chat, righteousness over condemnation. The father wants us to walk in the righteousness that Christ Jesus provided for us. This is second Corinthians chapter five and verse 21. This is what happens. Here is Jesus. There's no sin on Jesus. Zero. No sin on Jesus. Here is us. We were born in sin, shaped in iniquity. What God did was God took our sin and imputed it on Jesus. That's a word that means transferred it. God imputed our sin onto Jesus. He knew no sin. And we knew no righteousness. The Bible says that God imputed his righteousness onto us. And so remember the old movie Trading Places with Dan Aykroyd and Eddie Murphy? Jesus traded places. So Jesus took our sins so we could take his righteousness. So now we are, I am, say this, I am the righteousness of God by faith. When you get a revelation of the fact that you are righteous, then you, you walk free from, you're not free to sin, you're free from sin. When you understand who you are and that the position that you have in God's family, you reject guilt and shame and condemnation and you walk in your rightful position. In the parable, the prodigal son was restored to his right position in the family and we are restored when we come back to God. Say amen to that. Number five, the power of redemption and restoration. The father celebrated the fact that his son came home. And God celebrates, heaven celebrates when we get saved and celebrates when we repent and we come home. The father celebrates restoration and reconciliation. God's arms are always open to his children coming home. Our past, let me help you out. Our past does not disqualify us from our future. Put this in the chat. I will not judge my future by my past. Your past does not disqualify you from your future. You never qualified in the first place. Jesus qualified for you. The son thought his performance had disqualified him from his son status. Think about that. He thought his performance had disqualified him from his son status. His performance had disqualified him from his position. But 
No. The father was like, no, your position in the family came when you were born. And so when we were born again, we have a position in the family of God and we were born that way. And so it's not based on our performance. It's on the, based on the fact that we were born again. So if you're born again, you have a position that cannot be shaken. You have an identity that it cannot be disrupted. Can, it, your performance, get delivered from performance-based religion. Number six, and finally, last point for today, living in the fullness of our identity. Recognizing our true identity in Christ Jesus, it liberates us from guilt and shame and condemnation. And this is important because the devil specializes in these things. The devil wants to keep you bound in sin. He wants you to think that you have disqualified and disconnected yourself from God. But you are not defined. Put this in the chat. I am not defined by my lowest moments. You, your life is not defined by your mistakes. God loved you anyway. The Bible teaches us, 2 Timothy 1 and 9, the Bible teaches us that God saved us and called us, right? Not, not only did he save me, but he called me. Put in the chat, my calling is calling me. He saved us and called us, watch this, with a holy calling so that my life is about something that's bigger than me. Keep reading 2 Timothy 1 and 9. God saved us and called us with a holy calling. Watch this. Not according to our own works. Uh oh. So is God saved me and called me with a holy calling, not according to my own works, but according to his own purpose and grace, which he gave us. He gave me the purpose and the grace for the purpose. He gave me both in Christ Jesus. He gave me both in Christ Jesus before the world began. Read 2 Tim Timothy 1 and 9 so you can see it. It's not based on my performance. It's based on God's goodness, his grace, his love, his favor. It's God's purpose. It's God's grace. He gave me both in Christ Jesus before the, the world began. God knew all the mistakes I was going to make. God knew all the mistakes you were going to make. And God called me. God called you anyway. Not based on your works. Listen, when you get a revelation of this, you'll be able to walk in your divine identity. You will make a mistake. You'll do something something wrong. You're quick to repent. And in that moment, you'll still say, I'm the righteousness of God by faith. In that moment, you say, Lord, I thank you that I am righteous. I am your son. I, I am in good standing with you, not because of my performance, not because I'm good and not because I'm bad. My, I'm, I am righteous, not because of what I do. I am righteous, not because of what I fail to do. I am only righteous because of what Jesus did. Say amen to that. Glory to God. That's enough for today. Let's close this message out with a declaration of faith. I want you to lift up your voice and speak this over your life. Say this. Say, Father, this is a season of refreshing and restoring for me. So I boldly declare that I walk in your unmerited favor all the days of my life. I'm not defined by my mistakes. I'm only defined by your love and grace. I am free from condemnation because of Christ Jesus. And I walk in the fullness of my identity. Your love and grace are the foundation of my relationship with you. I am redeemed. I am restored. And I am called with a holy calling. I embrace my position as your child. It's not based on my performance. It's based on the finished work of Jesus. I am empowered to live victoriously and to reflect your love and grace in this world. And living with this mindset, I know greater is coming for me. I declare this by faith in Jesus' name. Amen. This is today's word, so please apply it and prosper. If you're not getting these messages, go to todaysword.org, click on the big red subscribe button, and you're going to get all my notes in your email inbox every day for free. Listen, if you're not getting my notes, get get my notes. I mean, they're free. Sign up and get the notes. Let me just say this real quick as I close. Thank you for sticking with me through the interruption. Um, I'm going to edit all this and put it on YouTube later. But listen, um, I released a new audio book uh, yesterday or two days ago. Um, so it's the, my latest book now, Grace Based Success, is available on audio. If you don't have that, get it. There's two books uh, that I have that are now available on audio. So go, go to Audible, uh, open up the Audible app and, and search for Rick Pena. You're going to see two books. Get those. They'll be a blessing to you. Also, I'm going to share some pictures today from uh, the, the school. We went to the school yesterday. We're going to go back to the school and see our kids today. Oh, my God, such a blessing. Isabella, love what we do, and we're representing you. Those of you that are partners with Rick and Isabella Pena Ministries, you couldn't come, but we came, and we're representing you. Thank you for helping us to share the love of God and the grace of God and food with these kids and the word of God every day. I love you. God loves you, too. We appreciate you. We thank God for you. Do me a favor. Leave me some comments in the chat. 
if this message is a blessing to you, and then share the word right now on your social media, on your timeline, and with your friends. Greater is coming for you. God bless you. If you enjoyed this content and you would like to know more about our ministry or you would like to partner with us in what we're doing in the Caribbean, being a blessing to Haitian children in the Dominican Republic, then please go to ripministries.org. You'll be able to find out more information there. And if you'd like to make a donation, all the donations are tax deductible in the United States. A few months ago, the Lord impressed it upon my heart to set up a coaching and mentorship program. And Isabella and I set that up. And so now we make ourselves available on three different levels for those that want access to us and to learn things about maximizing your potential, increasing your personal productivity and fulfilling your life's purpose. If you're interested in that, go to patreon.com forward slash Rick Pina. And then lastly, the Lord impressed it upon my heart to write several books and journals to help people grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. Please go to rickpina.co if you don't have our material. And there's also apparel there as well. Listen, thank you for being a blessing to us. We pray that our ministry will continue to be a blessing to you.